Hello, my name is Steve Pittman, and this is an installment of Longmont Public Media's Candidate Interview Series. I am here with Joan Peck, the current mayor of the city of Longmont, who is running for re-election. Hello and welcome, Joan. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. You'll have a time for summation at the end, but since our time is limited, I'm going to start right off with our first question. If you are elected, what is the biggest issue you want to address? And is, is that issue within the control of city council or is it something that requires a ballot measure or state level action? Well, that's a loaded question. I to just think about one. Uh, at this point, it's probably housing. We've been working on um, affordable and attainable housing and our staff has done an incredible job of moving forward with that. Um, it is a challenge. It's a challenge to uh, work with developers and to have a good relationship. I think we've done an incredible job and we have given with direction to staff to build six affordable units within uh, a time frame and so far they have built two with several in, in the hopper. But it takes a while. So that is the most pressing issue at the moment. And do you feel that's within the control of city council? It is because of the codes and zoning that we do as policy. Um, but we should always be looking at those codes because things change and sometimes we have uh, unintended consequences of the policies we make. So we should be re renewing those, refreshing, tweaking, looking, making sure that those policies let us help work with developers and uh, take us to the goal that we need. Thank you. There are several safety and crime reduction measures which the public has asked for, such as Vision Zero, restorative justice, and a larger police force. Which of these solutions do you think are effective and what else should the city council do? Thank you for that question. Restorative justice is very effective. Um, we have a great staff um, on that. Um, Vision Zero can be effective. It is going to be a challenge as we have to be able to work with, within our RTD district to help us with that. As we need more, mm, more transit within our city to get cars off the road and to help, uh, just help reduce the congestion so that people are not in their cars. To that end, our city staff has been working to, with RTD, we got a $400,000 partnership grant to uh, put an RFP out for a private vendor to offer a shared ride, um, a shared, shared ride option. So we're looking at that because we don't have local transit that actually covers our entire city. The other thing is with our Justice Department, we, we have some issues with the state legislation mm -hmm. that it is putting kind of a stranglehold on local police uh, enforcement mm -hmm. in some of the state laws. To that end, council has had discussions and invited state legislators here telling them the handicaps that we have and asking for amendments to those laws to look at them, et cetera. So we are working with state legislators to, to help us overcome some of those barriers that we have to policing in our city. Well, that's good to hear. Thank you. What is your vision for the future of Longmont's transportation network of vehicles, streets, sidewalks, and multi-use paths? According to vision, uh, oh, I'm sorry. According to our comp plan, we are building for walkable, bikeable neighborhoods. And to that end, we are extending our bike paths. Um, the 119 corridor that we got a $12 million raise grant for to finish has a bike path connecting us to Boulder right down the middle of uh, 119. Hmm. So that is going to be a great help for us in our multimodal vision. Uh, we are still working to connect to 
We've had other municipalities contact us about how do we connect the municipalities? Uh, can we do IGAs with them? Um, and so we have a good plan for that. Um, can you repeat part of that question? Well, it's a, a question about the transportation network okay. and uh, everything really, including the paths and not just the roads. Okay, so uh, I, I'm very confident that we are building a interconnected multimodal uh, city through our transportation department. Um, as far as the regional, I hesitate here because I've been working with RTD for so long that I, I don't know what to actually say about them, except for that we're fighting. And fighting is the right word, to be quite honest, mm -hmm. um, with other municipalities to get RTD to honor their, um, their our commitment, their law, to be honest, because of our mm -hmm. vote in 2004, yes. to give get us our Northwest Corridor, which is going to be helping us with what the governor is saying we need to have transit-oriented development. So if we don't get the transit from our district, it's very hard to comply with transit-oriented development. But as I mentioned before, we, did, we are putting out an RFP to help us with shared ride. So it is something that I have been working on, Phil Greenwald has been working on, and um, for going on nine years. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes, it is, it is hard. If, you know, if we can't get RTD to uh, actually work with us, I am committed, if elected, to working on a strategy to exit from our fast tracks uh, commitment per the vote of 2004. Okay. Well, thank you. The high cost of housing makes it difficult for service workers to afford to live in Longmont. Do you believe that they should be able to? And how do you believe it would impact the lives of the current residents if they could? I do believe that they should be able to. They should, everybody should have the option to live where they work. Um, it doesn't mean they have to, of course. But uh, I think that if we don't continue to work with um, developers on getting affordable housing through our inclusionary zoning ordinance, that we will lose our essential workers. We already, we already don't have enough housing for our school teachers and just the basic, even, even our waiters and waitresses and uh, dental hygienists, mm -hmm. etc. If they can't work here, they will find work closer to where they want to live or have to live or where their kids go to school. Um, so I think we've got a great plan with uh, working with our Longmont Housing Authority and not only that, just open book working with developers and partnering with them. I know that doesn't go, that doesn't translate well to a lot of residents, but it's very expensive to build. However, I do want the residents to know that we don't control the market. You know, it, it doesn't really make sense to, to blame council for, for the high cost of living. I also think that they need to look at what it costs them to get into a unit. If you have a three or four hundred thousand um, dollar property that you want and can afford to pay for, if the bank wants fifty to sixty thousand dollars down to even give you a mortgage, that's a handicap, not to the city but to that resident. If you don't have a good credit rating then that is a handicap to getting a mortgage. So I believe that the apartments that we're building will allow a resident, I mean, we started, my husband and I started in apartments. Mm -hmm. I think most people do. Mm -hmm. um, so the apartments uh, gives the resident time to figure out how they can manage their own budget to get into uh, a unit for sale. So yes. Thank you. Uh, so there'll be three measures on November's ballot. Do you, do you think the public should support each and why? 
and, and uh, you will have time to comment on each measure. The first measure is 3C, a new branch library and library funding. Can I make an opening statement about all three before we start? Okay. Or, okay. Yes. yes. I just want the public to know that um, we put out surveys the whole time I have been, the eight years I've been on council, every year we have residents coming to us asking for certain things. They need a new uh, or, or a um, better community room for senior services. We're running out of room. We want a recreation center. We want the... Uh, pool uh, to be fixed. We want different things. There is just a whole list of things. And as a council, we, we don't want to pick one over another because you have winners and losers. So we put out a survey with all of the asks on and said, what is it that you really want us to work on? And then we chose the top three, which are on the ballot measures. Um, uh, okay, so let's uh, go on to the actual okay. ballot measures, and you'll have a time at the end to uh, talk about uh, okay. this, this bigger picture if you want, okay? Or oh, come back to that. Thank you for pulling me back. Um, <laughs> so uh, so a first, new branch library and library funding. Do you support it? I uh, absolutely support that. That okay. is one of the heavy asks that we've had, mm -hmm. um, and we've been transparent about the cost. Mm -hmm. Should people vote for it? if that's what they would like us to spend money on. Okay, thank you. The second measure is 3D, an arts and entertainment center. It's basically the same answer. We have had, uh, I would like to say, first of all, no site has been chosen for the arts and entertainment center. Um, and we will not even tax people for that until the arts community comes up with $35 million, which was our negotiation. Mm -hmm. They have five years to do that. Mm -hmm. If they don't come up with that, then that is a uh, renegotiation with the public, to be honest. Um, and again, if that's what you would like us to spend money on, then vote for it. Okay, thank you. And the third measure is uh, the new recreation facilities. So this, uh, I'm not sure I have time to go into it. Yes, I think that if, if you want a recreation center, then vote for that. Do you need to vote for all three? No, vote what you personally would like to see us spend your money on. The ballot measures are actually the council asking you, are you willing to tax yourself to build these? We are not taxing you you will tax yourself or give us the uh, permission to tax. So um, the rec center is a, a, a two-part question. Uh, okay, um, so go ahead. Uh, you have a, some... a little time? Yeah. So the, the uh, YMCA is on there because as with the recreation center, because the uh, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, which advises council, asked us to put it on the same measure. That um, came to us because the Y asked about a year ago, they called and asked me if they could have a talk. So Harold and I and a few other people sat down with them. The YMCA building is falling apart, just like our Centennial Pool is falling apart. Mm. So. Um, it is a good deal for us because we need affordable housing. We are going to have a land swap. We're gonna swap the Ninth and Lashley property for the Centennial Pool property. We are giving them $12 million for the affordable housing portion, which is very inexpensive considering the price of land today. And then the Longmont Housing Authority will, after it is built, take on the uh, management of those affordable units. Got it, thank you. Um, so um, I, we have some time left and uh, so you're, you now have an opportunity to uh, make a closing statement and you could go in more to the whole initiative process if you'd like to do that. Okay, um, first of all, I'm running again because of all of the things that we've been working on that are exciting and I want the opportunity to finish them or move them ahead. Um, I am very pleased with our council. We work together well as a team, and I feel that we work well with our staff as a team. 
the again the ballot initials sound very convoluted and they are if you look at them as a whole package and if you look at them as the council is taxing you to do this we have listened to the residents for years on where we should be and i will use the rec center as an example we have had residents come to us saying when we purchased this property we were told that there would be a rec center in this area and the the city put aside that land years ago for a rec center so um, that's why it is going to go in the clover basin area we already have that land it's been de designated for the rec center um, the costs are only going to continue to rise we have not been able to buy it or build it uh, the rec center to this date because of finances. That's why we want you to know through a very transparent financing, which is maybe difficult to understand, we want you to know exactly what you're gonna vote for. Um, the other thing that I, the other reason I'm win, running, I'm sorry, I'm getting, my brain is in, not working well with my mouth. Um, the other, the other reason I'm running is that we have a lot of issues that the residents don't understand the backstory or the domino effect of what you want. For example, I am going to talk a little bit about the roads. We've had a lot of residents saying, why aren't we fixing the roads and complaining about the state of repair? There really is a reason for that. Every, every time we have a... Um, Every time we figure out our budget at the end of the year, we put dollars into the street fund for road repair. They are on a grid so that a certain part of the city is looked at for repair every year so that we don't have the whole city to work on at the same time. When the 2013 flood came, um, we have many bridges that were totally destroyed and we needed to be able to have upfront dollars to repair those. Yes, we got dollars from FEMA, we got dollars from federal grants, but the way those dollars work is that we don't get them up front. We have to build the, at least in segments, our project and then give that bill to the grant funding entity. And if we follow their parameters, they will reimburse us. So where do we get that upfront money? Came from the street fund, which was set aside for street repair. Um, and as you know, it's taken years to get three of those bridges done, and we're still working on one. Then we had um, the pandemic happened, which really cut the, the ability for staff to work on things. They were people working from home. We had staff quit, et cetera. But during the, during the pandemic, we also found we had potholes in the street. And with our huge rain that we had this spring, we were having asphalt disintegrate. So what was the cause of those potholes? It had to do with partly with some of our pipes, water pipes or lines that are years old. In some areas of town, they're 100 years old, were disintegrating, falling apart, hmm. leaking. So how do we fund those. Before we fix any cracks in the street, it makes sense that we should fix the lines under them that are allowing the potholes, they're leaking. So again, we took dollars from the street fund, and as you can see, as you go around town, we are digging up those streets, putting in new uh, infrastructure. The good news is this year in our budget, we put $8 million into the street fund to start fixing the problems that are causing frustration to our residents. Um, and then by 2025, we will have $10 million into that fund to fix our streets. So I ask for your patience. It isn't because we don't care. It's because of just uh, unintended consequences. So I am glad in a sense for the potholes because now we knew that we had a problem and we're fixing it. So thank you for your patience. It, it's very difficult to tell residents, too bad, we just can't do it now, but there are underlying reasons. Um, I'm gonna ask for your vote again so that we can 
uh, as a council move forward to continue the work we're doing to build more uh, affordable housing, attainable housing, and be able to have a city that we can uh, bike in, walk in, go to our library, have our children be able to go to a library without us having to drive them there, to have equity in the transportation that not everybody has to drive to the one rec center that we've got. Part of the city can uh, stay in their neighborhood and go to their rec center, uh, which relieves congestion, which allows us to bike to where we want to go. And together, I think we're, we're working toward an incredible town. And I ask your, for your vote so that we can continue the work. Thank you very much, and thank you for your patience with me. Well, thank you, Joan. And thank you for being here. Again, my name is Steve Pittman. This has been the uh, Longmont Public Media's candidate interview series. Uh, we appreciate your watching and um, informing yourself so that you can cast a, an informed vote in November. Thank you. Thank you.